When I first got out, I couldn't even do it. Today at Tim Hortons, you know how when people play basketball and their shoes are squeaking? Yeah, yeah. So when you hear someone get beat up in jail, that that's the first thing you'll hear is like, squeak, 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 squeak. And, and that drove me crazy. Like I get into jail and be in Tim Hortons and people be moving and I hear their shoes squeaking and I'm like looking around like, holy, and everybody's just been freaking me out. And then you just like, oh, it brings me even now my anxiety. It's like, I hear, I hate that shit. <laughs> I was 18 when I went in, 25 when I got out. I did three and a half years on a five year bit. Uh, I got out like from now, how many years ago from now? 2018, six and a half years straight. So 11, 2018 till whatever the date is today, 2022. Got out when I was 25. Wait a second, it's only been six years. Six, seven, seven, 20, 20, 30, 31. Oh shit, it's about longer than that. 18 to 24, best year of your life. It was November of 1996, I got sentenced. And this is my experience in the in the 90s, whatever, anybody today can be like, you're full of shit, old man, this is how it works in jail now. Uh, well, I didn't draw. I, I was trying to write and stuff before I went in, but I got into, into like tattooing. I don't even know how I started drawing. What, did I, what was I doing? I got beat up a lot, real bad. And then I met some people in prison that uh, helped me change my life and save my life in prison. If I didn't get introduced to sport in prison, I guarantee you I would have killed myself or I would have died because they introduced me into boxing. So I'd be writing letters all the time to my family. That's what it was. So uh, while I was writing letters, I'd be so bored writing letters that I'd be drawing all over the letters. There's a punching bag in jail, there's a speed bag in jail, there's um, training pads you can get for sparring. Some people, I, I forget who it was, they must have seen that as drawing on it and they said that I could do tattoos and a lot of things I was doing was like lettering and stuff like that. So I was like doing that on paper and I'd be sending them out letters and they seen it and said that I'd be good at lettering and started tattooing and they showed me how to like build the machines and stuff like that. If I didn't learn how to box or have something to consume my mind, while I had that little bit of time out of myself in a Max, I would've went nuts. That place, man, it makes you think all kinds of dumb shit. I'll tell you a funny story. Remember Y2K when I was in jail? I'm paranoid as shit. I had all kinds of tuna cans stacked up because I knew that if the computer systems reset, if everything got all fucked up, I knew those fucking guards would just leave us in there to die. Why wouldn't they? You know what I mean? Like, so we'd just be in there to die. I was like, well, if it does happen, I got a couple days of tuna. The best thing that I found to do I had 10 CDs, that's all you're allowed. So I had like Talking Heads, Greatest Hits, Sand the Vaseline, Double Disc Set, Story of the Clash Volume 1, that was two CDs. And I had Pink Floyd the Wall, which was two CDs as well. Then I had No Effects, White Trash, Two Heaps and a Bean, Dead Kennedys, Gimme Convenience, Gimme Death, Face to Face, Don't Turn Away, and Frank Zappa, Uncle Me. Mm -hmm. told me, yeah, you're leaving in a week. I said, can I just stay? I'm comfortable. I'm established. I don't want to get out yet. And they're like, well, you just did six and a half years. And I'm like, yeah, still, I don't, I don't want to go. Why not? I don't have any troubles here. I have no bills. I don't have to do anything. I was actually thinking about the people I was going to leave behind. In my head, I'm going, F like, my buddy's doing life. And he literally is jumping in front of a blade for me. So when I'm leaving, I'm going, F we got to leave him behind. I'm getting out. He's here forever. He goes, you know what, like, I love you, man. Hopefully I don't see you soon. But in my head, I'm like, I should have just punched the guy in the fucking face. I remember when I was getting all my stuff back, I had my old clothes from when, like, three, three and a half, like, almost four years ago, and it's like, pulling them out, and it's like, it reminded me, it almost like, when I was, Looking at them, it just brought me right back to like the very first day, you know? And now I'm grabbing it and walking out with it. The funny thing is knowing that everything you have in the whole wide world fits in a box that you have that you carry with you. Everything that you possess. I had 10 CDs. Uh, just white t-shirts from jail. And socks and stuff like that. What else did I have in there? I had my ghetto blaster, I had my Discman. And I had my TV. That fit in there too, my 13 inch TV that you were allowed to have. Doors open. It was vast, but 
blue sky, sun in my fucking face. I got out in the summer. I think it was August. It was like fucking my eyes were like, whoa. My skin was pale from being inside. I'm like, damn. My mom's there. They're taking pictures of me with the door. And my mom and dad were like, yo, nice to see you. And I'm like, fucking freaking out. Like, where, what are we doing? Where am I going? Like, what's happening? It's actually a rainy November day. I go to all days to get out, you know? It's like a perfect rainy day. It was like a reminder. My girlfriend sometimes will be like, you're not here, but you're here. But if you're in a six by 12 cell for six years, great. When I got to the halfway house, I had so much anxiety. I would go to sleep at two or four, three, five in the morning. I'd wake up and see concrete walls around me. Like, whoa, like, am I really out of here? And I'd like look around like, man, I'm actually out of prison. But you're like, this is not real. Yeah, I feel like it all the time. It's like when you've done something wrong that nobody knows about, but and you're thinking about it all the time, you know? It's weird because I could, I could approach anybody if they have no idea who I am and what I've been through. I still feel guilt for some reason. It's like something, it'll pop in my head. Oh, I wonder what they're going to think if they find out this. If they know I've done this and know, know I've done that. Like they may like me now, but I wonder if they're going to like me later. And that's my point about earlier. Living with my girlfriend, she's like, why are you a hermit? Why do you like to be in front of your TV? Why don't you want to leave the house? And, and you can tell somebody something so many times. They don't get it. Well, I hate eating food around people. I want to be alone. I like being in my house. I like going to work. I like coming home. It's very simple. I just want to be here alone. I like the quiet. I like my home. I like to be here in my little room or my little house. Triggers. I can't really think of any. That's probably a coping method right there. I don't even realize it. Huh, weird, man. These are weird connections. And another thing is I sleep on the couch all the time. I like the couch, it's comfortable, it's my own thing, it's as long as my jail bed. I don't know. It's a lot of work to get a pardon. I had to like fill all these papers out and then I had to write like this big letter. I got a degree. I, I got my trade certificate, you know what I mean? Like I'm moving ahead, you know what I mean? I, I'm married to a woman who's uh, on her way to be a professor. She turned out to be um, more of a an advocate now, like for inmates, you know what I mean? You know, and she's like, oh yeah, like you guys, you're all just normal people, but you know, people can stigmatize no matter what with all kinds of things, you know, and that's just, just it's just another one of those things. And some people can get over it and some people can't. Don't let me out, don't make me shout, don't let me out, go out and about, here's where I've grown, so leave me alone, let me know.